time to get the Kratos tank from the Horus Heresy weathered. But first, I'm going to do a quick comparison of Citadel's old shades and their new shades. <laughs> By now, I'm sure you've heard that Citadel has released reformulated versions of their entire shade line. And uh, they, the main distinction you'll see is that they're now in the smaller bottles, though the price is the same. They have been reformulated to be more like Citadel's contrast paints. The way I've heard them described is that they're just... Uh, thinner versions of the contrast paints so that they're supposed to produce fewer tide marks uh, but still flow well and have the same colors. Now there are plenty of videos out uh, that that talk about these shades and that show you know uh, I've watched them you've watched them where they take miniatures primed in white and just cover them in the shades and do them side by side and all of that. Um, and and that 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 is beneficial and helpful in its own way. So I'm not knocking that, um, but that's not what I'm going to do in this video. What I'm going to do in this video is focusing on using these two colors, Nolan Oil and Agrax Earthshade, in both the old and the new, and just do some side by side comparisons of practical usage. Uh, I'm going to use the old ones the way I've always used them, and then use the new ones the same way, and just see how it looks on the model. I've stirred each of these up with my little electric stir tool, a practice that I highly recommend. And I'm just going to apply this uh, like I normally would. Now, this is using the old shade. And I'm just going to go over this very heavily. And this is exactly how I would have done it had they not released the new shades. This is not like I'm doing something that I wouldn't have done. Now, one thing to note, uh, to be fair, I am going through, and in areas that I see it pooling where I don't want to, I'm wicking it up. Now I'll use the new version of the Nolan Oil, and I'll just apply it the same way. Now while that's drying, I'm going to work with the Agrax Earth Shade, and I'm going to apply this just like I would if none of this new stuff would have come out. Use a liner brush to get right along the edges here, just to do a a very careful recess shading. This is with the uh, the old formula Agrax Earth Shade, and then also in areas like where the bolt detail is. What I tend to do is just get it off my brush just a little bit, and then just go in around the bolt, put in some color, get that on there like that. I may wick off my brush. Clean it up just a bit and just add that in around the bolt detail. I want to do the same thing with the new formula of the Agrax Earth Shade. Just apply this little bit of recessed shade here along where this joins. And I'm going to do some, some of the bolts just like I would. Now while those are drying, I'll go ahead and do some additional applications of the Agrax Earthshade, just like I would have done otherwise. Uh, like for these recessed panels here, the panel lining. Now another way that I often use shades is to put in some color right along the transition between two areas like this. I just kind of paint that in just like this. Now I'll use some of the new formula, Agrax Earthshade, to just do kind of the same thing. I'll just paint this in right along this transition right here to be very similar to the one that I did just below it. And one more quick test. Over these exhaust shrouds, I'm just going to paint the old Agrax Earthshade right over it, just like this. These are going to be pretty dirty anyway, so... I figure it's a good test of just painting it over it. And then I'll do the same kind of thing with the new version of the Agrax Earthshade and just paint that all over the outside of this exhaust shroud. All right, well, while I'm going to continue using these as I weather the model, let's do a quick look. The, the test of applying it over uh, 
straight over the paint with uh, known oil. This is the old stuff on the left and the new stuff on the right. Um, did about like I expected. Uh, the old stuff gave a little more of a staining effect, uh, which is nice sometimes over that uh, known oil or over the lead belcher or over some metallics like that. So you see it left a little more of a staining effect. Um, on the right side, it pulled back a little more from the the higher edges and went into the recesses a little more. You still got a little bit of that staining effect on the barrel. Not quite as much, um, but it flowed uh, pretty well and um, did exactly like you would expect something that's based more on contrast paint to do. Now, I will say that um, either result for me would be acceptable uh, because there are further steps you can do in terms of texturing the barrels and putting in some additional little uh, features and things uh, using a sponge with, say, storm host silver to get a little more of a texture, and that's going to accentuate that staining. But if if I just switched completely to the new formula, I would be perfectly happy with this. I did notice it takes just a little longer to dry. This is still actually drying just a little bit. I just you know, hit them with a hair dryer. Um, but I'm I'm good with with either result. Now on the hatches, the old is on the left, the new is on the right. I definitely like the new, the newer formula a little better around the bolt details. Um, I just think it gives a little more of a cleaner uh, application around it and that it just sort of self feathers out. Um, there's still a little bit of tide marks on both, but I thought the, the new formula just did a better job on this than the old formula. Um, while I wasn't unhappy with the old formula, I like the new formula a little better just in terms of this quick test. Um, so that's definitely a plus for it. Now here you can see those exhaust shrouds and the one on the left is the old and the one on the right is the new. Uh, they look about the same. I think the one on the right is still drying a little bit. Um, it's just got a little bit of a sheen to it that I think is... Um, not the final sheen, but it's still drying, um, so I want to let it be. Uh, you can see that there's both have some tide marks, both have some staining, um, but on a piece like this, uh, for the purposes that I had, that's, that's what I wanted, so that's to be expected. Um, not a whole lot of difference, really, in terms of how they look once put on the model. I do notice as I'm looking at these, that the new formula, um, where it does pull back from the original surface, does allow a little more of the color to show through. In other words, they're both staining the surface, but in the areas where it stains um, uh, with the new formula, you get a little more vibrancy from the background colors. Again, because of its heritage uh, more in the contrast paint, uh, formula that makes sense. Now here you can kind of look at the recessed panel lining and the, the main thing I will look at that they both in terms of just coloring in the panel lines they both did fine. I, I mean they the the new formula flows a little less than the old formula but not in any way that it would be a problem. But what I do like is where I did this this lining right here along this transition and right here with the old formula, it behaved exactly as I expected, but there was um, a little bit more tide marking and things like that. With the new formula, while there's still tide marks, um, the way they feather out, just they kind of self-feather a little better than the old formula. And I really like the way that looks. Um, this is looking closer to what I could achieve uh, with oils or enamels. Uh, so I'm, I'm real happy with this new formula in terms of the application right along there in that instance. Now, obviously, this is not an exhaustive test. I just showed you a couple of very uh, confined circumstances, but they represent the way that I use shades uh, more often than not. Um, even though they're very quick, simple tests, this is what I do with shades uh, uh, most of the time. So uh, my, I, I guess you'd say my initial verdict is that 
I, I like the new ones. Um, I don't. I didn't have any problems with the old ones. Um, I, I learned to work with uh, the weaknesses they had, some of the tide mark things and stuff like that. I learned to use them in a way that that I got the maximum benefit from that formula. As I use these, I see that there are some slightly different approaches to how you use them in terms of tide marks and flow and cleaning and all that. But it's not so different that I would say you would want to avoid these. Um, I, I'm going to be quite happy as I run out of the old ones to use the new ones. Um, and in some cases, take advantage of what the new stuff offers that the old doesn't do quite as well like along these areas here so there will be a while that I may be using a little of the old a little of the new um, I, I'm I'm happy with this with this change it's it's not a revolutionary change it's an evolutionary change but I think it's a good change the biggest drawback I see is just the you get less for you have to pay the same amount of money but otherwise I'm happy with it now, I'm going to continue. I'm going to blow through the weathering really quick. Um, and I'm going to continue using these throughout the weathering. And if I notice anything in that, I'll point it out. But this first look, I'm very happy with the new formula Citadel Shades. The next step would be to apply some decals. So I started off using some microscale micro set to prepare the surface for the decals. And I moved the decal into place. Uh, I generally try to be careful in the first application, but if it doesn't get where I want, then I live dangerously and use the tip of my hobby knife and uh, just get that adjusted into place. Squeeze out any air bubbles or anything like that underneath it. I just go in with a cotton bud and just starting in the center, just kind of roll out from that and then just begin working out everything from underneath. Next, I apply some Walter's Solve Set over the decal and I give it a good coat around the edges and over the center of the decal. Once I have that on there I let it be. This is going to soften the decal up so you don't want to touch it or try and move it around at this point. After making sure that it was fully dry I just went over the decal with some Lamian medium to uh, dull it down so it wouldn't be quite so shiny and uh, make it look ready for uh, make it ready for the rest of the weathering. If there are any air bubbles or anything like that under it, that's where the chipping goes. Once that's dry, the decal looks good and it's ready for the next steps. To apply the chipping, I went back to the Sybarite Green and I thinned it down about 50-50 with water. Uh, so it was a fairly thin mix. Now it goes on fairly bright, but once it dries, it's much less bright than this. And the reason I do this is it reduces the opacity of the paint and in effect desaturates it a bit. Um, the background color still shines through just a little. And by desaturating the chipping like that, I have this working theory that it allows me to get just a little more chipping on the model without it being too extreme or too stark. So uh, if you've not used this before, experiment with it because it's a it's a great way to add various levels of chip. I also like to use a 2-0 liner brush and using this very thin paint just to add some streaks and uh, other kind of abrasions like you might see as it drove past something and scraped against something. So just just various streaks, vertical, horizontal, whatever. And you can always uh, use this brush to also get to areas that perhaps you had a little more difficulty getting to with the sponge. It's also a great way to add some chipping over your decals. Now for chipping the black areas, I went back to the Sons of Horus Green uh, because I didn't want it to be so stark at like the Sybarite Green would be and I wanted it to appear as if uh, the black were painted over the Sons of Horus Green and so that would be the first color that chips through. You could certainly just stick to the Sybarite green for the whole thing. Uh, I do think it would help to reduce the opacity of that paint just a little more if you did uh, by adding some water. But I just continue adding this around the black areas. And once it's done, um, when you look at some of the black areas with the Horus green chipping and the green areas with the Sybarite green, 
they don't appear too out of balance. Your eye kind of blends it together so that it just seems to look right. To get started on the tracks, I dry brushed on some Vallejo dark gray. I like using this because it's got a little bit of a bluishness to it. But the idea here is that instead of painting everything silver to start with, I started with Steel Legion Drab that was put on in the previous video and then I dry brushed this on and what it does is it gives the appearance of tracks that have been used. It's, it's a base for the rest of what's going to come. Tracks that have been used, they've gotten a little dirty, they've gotten a little rusted, but in rolling around, uh, that process of rolling around uh, scuffs up the tracks and lets the base metal show through. So the dark gray is representing the base metal. Once I had that on there, I used uh, Sarah from Sepia. This is the new formula uh, to, uh, to apply on that. And it's just to enhance that, that brownishness, that reddishness, to bring out uh, a little bit of a rusty look. Uh, but it's also to bring out some of the bolt detail to uh, just help that stand out and uh, give a little bit of definition to the tracks. Once that was mostly dry, I put on a heavy, heavy coat of scrag brown that was thinned with water. Now, I thinned it about five parts water to one part paint, so it's very much a wash. But this is just going to add to the rusty look. I really wanted it to be around the bolts and into the cracks and the nooks and the crannies and things like that to really just uh, give that rusty look to the to the model. Now when you put this on, if you get it pooling in some areas, you can always clean your brush off and wick it up and then add some more. Now the next step was to use this graphite pencil. It's just a giant piece of pencil lead basically. This is an HB. Um, I've used a number two. Uh, you test out what you want. A regular pencil will work just fine. But what I do here is I go in and I color in the raised areas on the tracks. Now what this represents is when the tank rolls across uh, the ground, hard surfaces, any surfaces, all that weight pushing down on it cleans off the metal parts. Um, just shines it up, knocks off rust, knocks off dirt, knocks off anything that's been collecting on that. And so what it's able to do is get back down to the base metal of uh, the track itself. I even scratch up a little bit uh, there on the flat part of the track. This in my mind works better than silver paint because silver paint is always going to look silver but with this graphite as you look at it from di different angles sometimes it's got a really bright shine to it and other times it's just got a dark gray uh, color to it so it looks much more realistic. You do have to keep in mind this can be removed with enamel washes and if you put a matte coat on your model, it's going to dull it down, so you'll need to do this after any matte coats. You can see how that looks once it's on there. It just gives a, a shine. A, a, I think it gives it a realism that other uh, paints don't work. If you do want to substitute paint for this, I would recommend something like a neutral gray with maybe just a hint of red to it. Now I want to add in a few fluid stains. Uh, for this, I'm using Agrax Earthshade, and I'm using the new formula, uh, Agrax Earthshade. Uh, and I just watered it down with a little bit of water. Um, there's nothing special about using this. There are other products you could use uh, that will give you the same effect. Um, Vallejo makes great products. You could just use thin down uh, paint itself. Uh, the key is to just put some various stains and things like that around on the model that represent where oil or grease have come out of some mechanical area. It can represent where someone has spilled some oil on top of the model. Um, it can even represent, you can add different colors, you can represent things like coffee stains or um, whatever. Just putting these in various places around the model is going to help uh, give those just a realistic look and uh, make it look like it's a working piece of uh, some kind of mechanical object. The main thing to remember when you're applying acrylics as stains and things like this versus oils and enamels is to build them up in very thin layers. That's what's going to work best is uh, controlling the opacity, building it up, 
uh, layering it up, and you'll get a good look. If you if you used oils or enamels, you would put more on and then uh, kind of subtract from that. It's a subtractive process versus an additive process. But I like using acrylics for this just because they dry really fast. Next, I wanted to put on some earth effects. So I'm using this wilder, light brown textured earth. This is the fine uh, version of it. And what this is is just a light brown medium, uh, acrylic medium, with uh, some, some texture in it. I don't know whether it's dirt or something like that, but there's just a grainy texture to it. And I put this on uh, in uh, sections, a fairly heavy coat. Uh, you can, if you use something like this, um, you can experiment with how much is too much, how much is too little. Um, it's a very controllable effect. And again, I like using this versus enamel or oil products that do this simply because the drying time is so very quick. But once I get a small section of it uh, coated like I want, then what I'll do after that is I go back and just dip my brush in some water and just begin kind of blending it in, much as you would with enamels or oils. Uh, but you've got to do it before it starts drying, which is uh, fairly quick. But I just blend it in and begin reducing it. I don't want it looking as stark generally as it does, uh, as you see uh, when I first put it on. But by blending it in with water, it's going to give it a much more organic and uh, realistic look to it. Now you can build this effect up, uh, add, it, uh, add it on there after it dries and see what, you, see what you like. If you see that it wasn't heavy enough, you can go much heavier. Uh, it can be the basis for texture that you later paint over and add other effects over. You can even put oils and enamels over this. So it's a very flexible product. And other manufacturers make things like this. So uh, you don't have to just look for something from Wilder. Now I also apply some of this uh, to the tracks and to the back of the model. Here you've got to think about how the mud would be picked up by the tracks. Generally, rolling across the ground is going to clean the tracks up a bit. But as it comes around towards the back, that's where it's going to have more mud picked up on it. When it comes up over the top, it's going to deposit a lot of that. It's going to scrape any of that off onto the fenders. Uh, it's going to sling it off on to the area around it. So that back part of the tank is usually going to be uh, much dirtier with a lot more collection of mud. Further up on the tracks, more of it will fall off and, uh, and you won't see as much of it on the tracks. But I do the same thing. I just go in and put it on fairly heavily and then I just get some water and begin reducing it. On the tracks I reduce it generally a lot more than I do on the fenders themselves. Uh, but you still want some hint of the dirt left behind. And once that dries you can see the effect that it gives. Um, it dries less opaque than it goes on. Uh, you could at this point add additional uh, layers of it uh, or other colors or just leave it like this depending on what your tastes are. I'm pretty happy with the texture I've got here though later on I am going to add some additional color. Now I want to finish up the exhaust so I start off by sponging on some Citadel Rune Fang steel um, and this is just a brighter silver that's just going to add some bits and sections of texture it doesn't really show up much now, but the next step is going to really make that, that texture come out. Now the next step is to add some Nuln Oil, and uh, I just apply this on very heavily over all the silver areas. Um, I don't try and mop up if it's pooling. Uh, I don't try and do anything special like this. Once I have the first coat on and it's dry, I wanted to make them look even dirtier up near the top. So I went ahead and applied a second coat of Nuln Oil up at the top of the exhaust stack. To add a soot effect, I use Vallejo Flat Black. Um, it's a very flat black. And I just dry brush this on. You could use other products. Uh, you could try and put some bluing in and things like that. I think that looks a little uh, contrived on my own work. So I just prefer to use something black like this to uh, just make it look sooty and uh, used. I use the same flat black on the end of the gun barrels, again, just to give them a sooty look. You can use this for vents and uh, for other things like that too, but just anywhere where there's going to be some kind of smoke coming out or some kind of exhaust, just dry brush that on lightly like that, uh, just to give it a, a worn, used look. 
Next, I wanted to add some additional color and just some additional staining on the side. So I used this Vallejo model wash. This is the color called European Dust. Um, and it's just a little darker than the dirt that I put on there. It, it provides some, some shading. It provides some additional grime and dirt. You can see that I, I moved this a little higher up the model. So I'm putting it onto areas where there's not necessarily texture. Uh, but just uh, just to make it look like a thinner layer of dried dirt and dust and things like that. And it shifts it from being uh, quite such a light uh, color to just a little darker, which I think looks a little better, uh, looks more like mud. But I put this over everything. You can put this over areas even where you haven't put any of the texture or the mud before. This can be used to represent where the crew walks around on top of the vehicle as they're getting in and out. Um, you can use this for splattering. So there's, there's a lot of ways to use this. Well, I think I'm ready to call this one done. What an absolute fun kit to build. This has just been, uh, this has been so much fun. This is why I model right here. Um, because this, this just has all the elements you want in a build. Easy assembly, cool looking, plenty of details to paint, uh, plenty of angles and nooks and crannies and rivets and just all sorts of things to weather. And uh, man, I just, I could go on about just how fun of a kit this is. Um, if, if you've not contemplated building uh, uh, one of these Horus Heresy kits and you're looking for looking for one of them to, to build this one, this one. I mean, it just encapsulates the whole experience right here. So I highly recommend this model. Um, and, uh, you know, if you are building it, uh, go to town weathering it. There's so much you can do on it. I've just shown a little bit that can be done. There's so much more that could be done. There's different styles of doing it. There's using oils and enamels and different colors you could make it much dirtier. You could make it less dirty. Uh, there's just so much to do. So explore the world of weathering and just have fun with it. Don't worry about, am I going to mess it up or something like that? That's the beauty of weathering. The whole point is to mess it up. Well, thank you so much for watching this video, especially if you're still hanging around here at the end. I am very grateful uh, for those who do hang out and watch the whole video. It means a lot to me and it helps the channel out. Um, there is a subscribe link down over here if you would be so kind as to click that if you've not already done so. And hit the little bell icon so you'll know when I have uh, new videos coming out. There are also links down below to uh, my social media. And uh, I'd be grateful if you would check those out. I would be especially grateful if you would check out the link to Patreon and uh, uh, look at what I have to offer there. If you like these videos, uh, patrons get uh, additional videos each week. Um, so there, there's more content available there, and it helps support the channel. It helps me do what I do. And if you're already a Patreon supporter, thank you so much for the support that you give to me and ultimately to my family because it's what you do for us that allows me to do this for everybody. Uh, we just wouldn't be able to afford it uh, with the kits that I do it with and the time that I do it with and the materials and everything like that. It just wouldn't be possible. Um, yeah, I'd still model, but I'd have to cut way back. Uh, so I am thankful for what you do uh, to bring this to everybody. And with all that being said, I'll leave you with one final thought, as I always like to do. In this hobby, if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. Happy day to you, friends. Bye-bye.